Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to understand what is the meaning of balancing and how it is important in moving parts of the machine components. So first we understand the definition of balancing. Balancing is the process of designing or modifying machinery so that the unbalance is reduced to an acceptable level and if possible is eliminated entirely. So let's understand the balancing with the help of one suitable diagram. So we will see this balancing scale everywhere. So what is this balancing scale? We will say that this is unbalanced and this is a balanced one. Let us suppose here we have a 5 kg of weight and here we have a 2 kg of weight. So this is an unbalanced condition. But when we have a equal weights, let us suppose here also we have a 5 kg and here we have also 5 kg. So this is a balancing condition. So this is a simple definition of balancing. What we have do here, we have just make the balanced of this particular balance scale with equal weights at opposite directions. So this is the opposite to this one. So both are opposite to each other and equal and opposite to each other basically. So that's why these are balanced now. So 5 kilo weight here, 5 kilo weight over here. So this is a balanced condition and this is an unbalanced condition. So this is a simple definition of balancing. Okay. So what kind of products we have to balance? So you can see here often an unbalanced of forces is produced in rotary and reciprocating machinery due to inertia forces associated with the moving masses. So basically we balance two types of masses. First is balancing of rotating masses. Another is balancing of reciprocating masses. So what is this rotating and reciprocating? We can, we can see with this illustration. The piston is reciprocating in between the engine in this way and your crank is rotating in this way. So this is a rotating part and this is a reciprocating part. So you have to balance each and every rotating and reciprocating masses of your machine components. So let's see further. So in this series of lecture, first we are going to do the balancing of rotating masses and after that we will discuss the balancing of reciprocating masses. So how the rotating masses are unbalanced in the machine components after a some time we will see in this lecture. So we can see here whenever any particle or mass moving in a circular path it experiences a centripetal acceleration and force is required to produce it. Okay. So let us understand with simple example a thread is attached with a mass and it is rotating in a particular orbit. So we will say that it is rotating in particular direction due to the centripetal acceleration toward its center of the mass. An equal and opposite force acting radially outwards acts on the axis of rotation is, is called centrifugal force. So you can see this. This is a centripetal acceleration. This is a centripetal force. And towards this side, we have a centrifugal force. Okay, which move, which acts radially outwards. Okay. And due to this disturbing force, the centrifugal force is one of the disturbing forces on the axis of rotation and the magnitude of which is constant, but direction changes with the rotation of masses. So due to the centrifugal forces, there might be unbalancing in the rotating masses. You can see also here, this is an axis of rotation. This one is axis of rotation this one and this is the principal axis after putting a mass over here. Let us suppose we have a shaft axis here and we have attached mass over here. This is a one of the mass and we have a heavy part here due to some density consideration. This part is a heavy. So if it is more heavier than other parts, it creates vibrations in the system and unbalancing in the conditions. Okay. So this is the reason the unbalancing happened in the rotating masses and the process of providing the second mass in order to counteract the effect of centrifugal force of the first mass is called balancing of rotating masses. So what we do now here is we have to put some extra weight over here. This is an extra weight, extra mass you can say that and it is exactly opposite to this one. So after that, the system will be balanced. 
So this is the way to make the balancing of rotating masses. Let's see further. So now we are going to understand what are the types of unbalancing happened and how to counteract that. So first of all, we have to see that static balancing. That is a very important balancing over here. So what is static unbalancing basically? Static unbalancing happens when principal axis displaced parallel to the axis of rotation. So you can see from this figure, this is the axis of rotation and due to this unbalanced mass, the principal inertia axis has been displaced. So this is a displacement. So this is a displacement. After some time when the shaft is rotating due to unbalancing of this particular mass, the, the principal axis has been displaced from the axis of the rotation of the shaft. So this is called static unbalancing and we have to balance it. How to balance it? It is simply by placing the single mass placed opposite to the center of gravity in a plane perpendicular to the axis of the shaft. What we have to do is we have to put some extra weight over here. This is extra weight exactly opposite to the unbalanced mass. Why it is making the balancing here? You can see here when it's rotating, it creates a centrifugal force over here. Let us suppose mr omega square. In the same way, this particular mass will make the centrifugal force to this direction and the mass and into whatever the distance from the axis of the rotation and angular velocity that is a centrifugal force. So it will create the same centrifugal force exactly opposite to the unbalanced mass due to which the balancing have been occurred and there is no static unbalancing in the system. Okay, so this is a static balancing. So you can see here that what is static balancing when we have forces, the summation of forces, all the centrifugal forces must be zero. Okay, what type of centrifugal forces? It may be a vertical forces. It may be a horizontal forces. So all must be zero. Only then we can say that this particular system is statically balanced. So next we have a dynamic balancing. So what is dynamic unbalancing is it is a combination of static unbalancing and couple unbalancing. So already we have done the static unbalancing in which we have to make the all forces and summation of all forces to zero. Okay. Now what is this couple unbalancing? Couple unbalancing happens when two unbalances exist 180 degree apart but in different planes. So let's understand what is couple on balance. So you can see here, this is one of the shaft and this red line shows the axis of rotation. And here we have a weight, let us suppose M1 and here we have a weight M2. So due to this, the force will happen toward this side and exactly same force will happen to this side. Due to that, we have a couple arrangement due to these two masses. So this is a couple unbalanced. So this force will try to take this mass to this side and this force will try to take this particular shaft to this side. So it will create a couple over here and we have to remove this couple or we have to balance this couple to make the dynamic balancing happen. So we can say that we have to make all the forces equal to zero and we have to take all the couple to zero. Only then we can say that this is a dynamic balanced. We can see that if we make the system dynamic balanced, the static balance automatically happens because this is a condition for static balancing and both conditions must be met to make the system must be dynamically balanced. So basically what is the reasons or causes of unbalancing? So we can say that material density is not proper the density of the material when we make it, it is not proper. So let us suppose this is a shaft and we have attached mass over here. So let us suppose this part, particular part is more heavier than this part. Then we can say that the, it this particular mass will create a unbalanced in the shaft. Okay. Then maybe the machining and casting uh, during manufacturing of that particular part is not proper. Then it will create the unbalance. Now is balancing is necessary. Yes, it is very necessary. Reason, let us understand with the help of this particular formula of the centrifugal force. F is directly proportional to omega square. So let us suppose the angular velocity is changing 
or you can say that it is twice okay then force will if if angular velocity is changing with twice then we can say that the force will quadruples if the shaft is moving with some angular velocity and if we if there is a vibrations over there the angular velocity will changes due to changing in the angular velocity of two times so the centrifugal force will quadruples it will make more vibrations okay so this is the basic meanings of balancing in the technical terms now we have some cases of the balancing so first case is balancing of single rotating mass by single mass rotating in the same plane then we have a balancing of single rotating mass by two masses rotating in a different planes then we have a balancing of several masses or different massing rotating in the same plane and balancing of different masses rotating in the different planes okay so let's understand the first case it is a very easy case let's say this is a shaft of the axis okay and here we have a one of the mass let us suppose this is m1 and this is r1 the distance from the axis of the rotation so let us suppose this is an unbalanced mass now how to make it balanced we have to put exactly equal weight into the opposite direction in this way so this is a m2 and this is a r2 so now we can say that whatever the centrifugal force over here this is m1 r1 omega square omega is a constant of term because it is the angular velocity of the shaft so whatever the angular velocity of the shaft that would be the angular velocity of the masses so fc m2 r2 omega square so now we can say that whatever the centrifugal force happens due to this mass in this direction exactly same centrifugal force will take over here so in this way both forces cut each other and we have a summation of forces zero so that's a condition of the static balance that has been met so this is the way to balance of a single rotating mass by a single mass rotating in the same plane further cases we will discuss in the coming lectures i hope you understand this balancing term in the theory of machines or dynamics of machines systems if you have any query you can comment in the comment section thank you everyone